Yeah. All right, you ready? No, 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 no. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? Yep. Welcome to another episode of Working On My 1984 Mazda RX-7. Um, today, we are doing brakes because we have a track day coming up in seven days. It's a week from now. It is a week yes. from now. So we've got all kinds of parts in the back of here, in the back of the Mazda, and I forgot my nice microphone today. So uh, let's Talk get loud. to it. We're driving with Grid Life. Um, if you follow us, you know uh, we go to Grid Life events a lot. I've driven one and I'm planning to drive a lot more. And so is he this event, actually. He's gonna be joining me out on track. But for you guys who've never been out on the track before, whenever you do plan on going, there are certain rules and regulations you have to abide by when you go to the track. And part of that is going through a technical inspection of your vehicle before you go out on track, just to make sure you're okay to go out there. You don't have like shit that's not tied down, your wheels are mounted properly, your battery is not going to fly around everywhere, you don't have fluids leaking. Um, and whatever sanctioning body, if you do end up doing a track day or you end up driving like competitively through, we'll have a tech inspection sheet and we'll, we'll go down and show you the things you need to check off and check on your vehicle before you go through tech and before you show up at the track. So Grid Life has one on their website and what I'm just going to do right here after this Buick Rendezvous pulls up into the garage and stops making so much fucking noise. Hello. Grid Life's tech inspection sheet. It's on my phone, but normally you would print it out. You're actually supposed to print it out. And when you go through tech, you hand it to the tech guys as you're standing in line when your car goes up and they they can go through everything along with you because there's two rows to get checked. One that you check and one that they check. And the things on the list is your wheels and tires. Make sure those are good and in good condition. All your lug nuts are present and tight. Jake Passamato. Um, <laughs> No center caps or beauty rings. That's actually one thing we got to do on the Mazda tonight when we have the wheels off to do the brakes is I got to pop the center caps out. I learned that the hard way at Chicago. Um, at Autobahn last time, we had our first session out on track. And I came back and this one. the right rear was missing a center cap. Apparently they weren't fooling around about the, uh, the whole no center caps rule. Uh, the engine bay, no leaks, oil coolant, etc. Obvious. It burns it, it doesn't leak it. Burning and leaking are two different yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't look under the car right now. Um, make sure the battery is secured. Check. Engine and trans are secure. I'm fairly certain it won't come out, so we're all right there. <laughs> um, suspension, wheel bearings, okay. Sure. Ball joints, tie rods, okay. Yeah, we've gone over that a couple times mm -hmm. when we've been underneath the car. Uh, brakes, that's actually what we're working on tonight. Make sure your pedal, pedal pressure is firm. We almost <laughs> set up last time. We had to re bleed it three times to get all the air out of the system. Um, make sure your fluid level is okay. Usable pads and rotors. That's actually what we're doing tonight. And your brake lights are working. Last thing is miscellaneous stuff. Your helmet. When you actually go through the tech line at whatever place you go to, make sure you have the helmet you're gonna use in the car with you so they can have a look at it. Make sure you're not using a $50 Walmart biker helmet, a bicycle helmet, motocross helmet, stuff like that. It's gotta be Snell approved mm -hmm. and okay to go out on track. No loose items in the vehicle. Seat belts securely fastened. Harness is mounted properly, and then that's it. So basically, after going down all that list and looking at it all, what we're doing tonight is the third category, which is brakes. So, and real quick. not to freak anybody out, don't stress about tech. Just yeah, it's, make sure your car's safe. Yeah, as that's long all as the tech inspection is there for. Yeah, you don't need to freak out because you know, oh, I think a wheel bearing is going. If it's making noise replace it but you don't need to go overboard no as long as you check everything and nothing's gonna break or fall off out on track you should be okay yeah I mean this made it through at Chicago your car can make it through and this is a piece of shit all right I mean, it's a cool 80s vibe a piece of shit yeah all right let's get to it Okay. on the list of parts here, actually Brendan, thank you for handing that to me, is because we couldn't get the brake lines when we tried to do the brake lines last time before uh, Autobahn out of the factory calipers, I actually picked up some rebuilt calipers. Yeah. Two of them, fronts, because that's all I can get right now. Um, because for some reason nobody has rears. So we got two 
rebuilt calipers. Basically what happens is somebody sends in an old caliper with a core. Somebody bought a brand new caliper back in the day and they sent their core back. Basically this was a factory item off of another car. And when it got sent back, it got rebuilt. It's got all new hardware on it. It's got all new fittings, all new covers, and it's got a new piston in generally, it. Generally they replace the piston, all the hardware. What they're not replacing is the cast part of the caliper. That's where the big production cost is. That's all the metal. And uh, rebuilt calipers are just as good because it's just a factory caliper that's been Basically brand new. It's been it's sandblasted and then everything that usually wears out on them anytime is replaced. Next thing on the list is, we actually bought, actually bought these a long time ago. When I first actually, these actually showed up before I actually had the car. Because I knew we were had the track day coming up. I bought the car about three weeks before the track day in Chicago. And we showed up and did track day with it. Hey, we passed that. Yeah, we passed that. You don't need a fancy race car. I'm not going to say how much I paid, but not a lot. Back to what I was saying. Next thing on the list, braided stainless steel brake lines. Just to make sure, when you have stuff like this when you're out on track, brakes tend to build up a lot of heat at the end of a long session and your stock rubber brake lines can actually expand and if they expand and contract too much they can actually break. So the point of those is they're stainless steel and they won't expand as much if at all and they can take the heat a lot better. Um, for a better explanation of that, Engineering Explained very, Engineering Explained very recently put out a very good video. I'll link it. So, yeah, basically it's all about heat management when you're out on the track. Next thing, speaking of heat management, is a set of Hawk HPS racing brake pads. The reason I went with these is, is that it's the most aggressive option that I actually have for my car. I'm sure if I called Hawk up, they have the specs for whatever the caliper and pad sizes needs to be, and they'll be able to make me whatever they want out of their compounds, but readily available, this is the best that you could get. Basically. What it is, is it's a streetable track compound. Um, it's able to take a fairly aggressive amount of heat at the track and get you home. So we have new fronts and new rears ready to go on the vehicle. Now and then, again, you don't have to go overboard for tech inspection. I'm just putting on Napa Premium Ceramic. Yeah. I'm mostly going to ceramic for the better heat management. Um, they're not as good as Hawks, but I plan on with these pads. Yeah. The only reason I bought those is because this car doesn't have AC. It, it's loud. I don't really need comfort in this car. I'm a, I, I could take a fairly decent... My BMW has solid motor mounts and a bucket seat in it, and that's my daily. So I, I feel like I could take a decent amount of uh, abuse in the daily. So those will be decent. At the track, they'll have to be warmed up slightly to be effective, which is okay, because I know they won't fade in conjunction with the lines. And the last thing on the list, what's already in the car, at brake fluid. Not gonna say what kind of brake fluid it is because I can't run it on the street. But that can take a lot of heat. Um, it won't bubble up when it gets hot working with the lines and the pads. Should be pretty good. I'm excited to see how it goes. So let's, uh, let's get to work. The first thing you want to do when working on any vehicle is get it up on a pair of jack stands. Jack underneath a nice sturdy spot on the vehicle and put the jack stands in a nice safe position so that the vehicle won't fall on you. The last thing you want is to be losing limbs. Alright Brennan. Yes. What's going on now? Uh, we are undoing the rear caliper to start with the rear brake pads. So when you take a rear caliper off, mm -hmm. are you taking the full caliper off or are you just going to take the uh, top half off? Um, I'm not going to be taking the bracket, the bracket, off. bracket off because we're not going to be removing the rotor. Yep, because when you do pads, you just have to remove the top bit. Or, if you're lucky enough to have quick release pads, you just pull the pin out of the top and slide the pads out. F***ing lucky bastards. I've actually never worked on that yet. The slide, you take the uh, slide pins out, well the two pins out of the back. They're basically slide pins, it's what the bracket slides on. Mm -hmm. They are. Slide. Yeah, you take the slide pins out and then you slide the little uh, top caliper bracket off. You wanna show that to the camera for me, please? These pads are uh, about due. 
They look to be at about two millimeters thickness, which is when at work I would normally recommend replacing them. So good job on your timing there. Brennan. What? High five. Like it said, on the tech sheet, center caps out. Not good. Again, Grid Life, if you're watching, my center caps are out. Before you put the brake pads back in, make sure to use a caliper compressor tool or another tool to compress the caliper piston back down, otherwise you won't be able to put the brake pads back in. Also, use the uh, included grease pack with the Hawk pads to lube up any metal to metal surfaces before you put the new pads in. Son of a bitch. Come here, dude. There we go. And just like that, one side is slid in. As my grandpa used to say, just like uptown. I don't know how to take That's that. Another... Just like uptown, you know. Like what? Uptown funk you up? up no, like uptown, classic. Oh, okay, like okay, uptown. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's uptown, like the uppity part of town, uptown. Yeah, I'm getting what you're putting down. Yeah. Took me a second. All right, you want to show that? Got a real, here. up real close, like yeah, uh, right, uh, right uh, here. Real close, like right. right no, there. not like, not like there. Back up a little right, bit. Like back there. up. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right, right, wait, wait, right there. No, 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 right there. No, 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 a little bit. There. Good, all right. New pad, old pad. Yeah, look at the difference yeah. in. You can see how much of the friction material is worn away here as compared to here. Derek's uh, playing with fire here because he's only got, on the leading edge of the brake pad wears more than the trailing edge. Um, the leading edge here is down to about a millimeter. And trailing edge is about two to three. So. By the way, I don't know if you get if the camera's picking this up, but if you look at these old street like quiet type pads, there's little like flakes in it. Mm -hmm. And when you see like our pictures at night or from people at the track, like actually our photos from Autobahn, a lot of the guys that are running pads with kind of quiet like material in them, that's what that is. And it's cool when that heats up and the pad starts throwing it because it throws sparks. Just a little tidbit there I thought you guys might want to know. Are these quiet pads? No, they are not. No, they are not. So if the camera is picking it up, you can see... Go up a little bit. ...that there is not little flecks of metal in them. Yeah, you could definitely pick it up there side by side, at least as far as I can tell. Hold on, let me drop the exposure here a little bit. How about that? Does that work? Can you see the... Uh... Uh, you're the one with the viewfinder. I know. All right, if you guys can probably pick it up little flakes of metal in this one you could probably see it i could see it on the viewfinder then that has nothing in it it's just a bit of ceramic <laughs> go for it all right so we just installed the first caliper um going to bleed that side of the brake system uh, just so that we can make sure that it firms up the pedal that way it's easier to figure out if we have a bubble in the system, which side it's on. As you move along, don't forget to top off the brake fluid as you go, as you don't want to develop air inside the lines. As we installed each pad, we used a power bleeder to get air out of the system. Now, you don't have to use one. A, a friend and him pumping the pedal is good enough to get air out of your brake lines. Now, the last thing we needed to do was get the wheels back on the vehicle, drop it, and torque your lung us down. Now, make sure you do the torque properly and set it to the proper specs, as you don't want your wheel falling off the first time you pull a sweet-ass drift. All right, so now that my handbrake isn't dragging, what we have to do is we have to bed in the pads to the rotors. Basically what that is, is it's like um, when racing teams 
during practice, put on a set of brand new tires to scrub them in real quick. You know, do a couple laps on them, get them hot, go through one heat cycle. So that when they're put on for the race, they're already broken in and ready to go. What we have to do here is we have to get up to a medium speed, like mm, I'd say 40, 50 miles an hour, and then brake hard, but don't come to a complete stop. And then we keep increasing the speed until we get the basically to race speeds. And the point of this is bedding the pad to the rotor, because otherwise you can seriously screw some stuff up. All right, run number one. Well, damn. Big difference in braking? I'd say so, yeah. Big difference. There you have it. Um, we got everything replaced in the uh, on the Mazda, well, as much as we could. Um, we just finished bedding in the pads. Um, they feel amazing when they're warm. When they're cold, they're kind of sketchy. But that's to be expected from a pad like that. Um, my neighbors are definitely gonna hate me though, because every time I come to a stop, all four sets of pads squeal. I am a bit nauseous. What, to from be, the smell? To be quite honest. Oh, from the stopping and starting? The, the stopping and starting, especially looking down at the camera and not up at the road. Yeah, and, and the <sighs> as you come to a stop. I'll feel it. The only downside now, as far as the current setup goes, if you want to call it that, is the tires. Yeah. If you want to call it that, the current setup. We can trade um, tires for the weekend. Right. The car could definitely use a set of coilovers and a set of sway bars, judging by the body roll. Um, it would be a much more consistent braking just if the car didn't hawk forward so much. Just if the car didn't do this every time I hit the brakes. Just go to Napa, get some of the little rubber wedges. Yeah, we'll take the springs out, just stack Oh, I meant the little rubber wedges. Oh, you mean run some wedge in it? <laughs> Put a little bit of wedge in her. Don't do that. No. You will not pass tech. I know Those aren't good. But, that's it. We're done. Um, who knows what's happening next time. The last episode I alluded we were doing brakes. But I don't have anything to do right now. That was My the brakes. last thing. Your brakes. Yes. My brakes are now. So, tonight. Tonight, yes. But, it is now 11.30. Which is an early night for yeah. us working on cars. And we work tomorrow. Yeah. So we're going to do the pads in the Subaru. And then All right, Brennan. And then, wait. Tomorrow, we are heading up and watching Lemons. Yeah, we're watching Lemons tomorrow. You've probably already seen that video already because that's going to be in the vlog and not on a, not on a project video. Mm. But the vlog will probably be out first because we have a lot of backed up footage. But thanks for joining us for the next episode of the Mazda build. All right, Brennan. On three, we're going to do a Blues Clues and jump across sides, and then you're going to do the intro over here. You ready? Come on. Wait, wait. Can I just, can I just say something? Yeah. So, if it's 11.30 now, we're about to yes. start on my brakes. Yes. I work tomorrow. Yes. When do I get to sleep? Um, Because we're going to be at Lemons, and that's like all night, isn't it? Yeah. On the all night race. Yes. So, like, next chance to sleep is like 4 o'clock Sunday? Yes. And it's 11.30 Friday now? Yes. Now I woke up 6.30 this morning. Yes. We keep Red Bull in business. Eh, no, you gotta go the other way, Brennan. Wait, what? Wait, no. You swing this, like, on your side, you swing this way and jump across and pass me. So swing your arms like this and go this way, and you go behind me. Okay, like, get in line with me. Yeah, and I'll jump in front of you, and then we're gonna start the intro to your car. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs>
one last thing. Remember, if you need racing safety equipment, go to bridgemoto.com and use the coupon code AFTERBURNER for 5% off at checkout. Remember, that's bridgemoto.com. Use the coupon code AFTERBURNER. That offer's good through October 31st.